Good morning and welcome to Day One Outdoors. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to target steelhead from the bank. Most of us don't own boats and winter steelhead offers a great opportunity for us to go out and chase these beautiful fish from the shoreline. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to look at each hole, break it down, and how to choose what techniques to utilize when you walk up on each spot. So let's get out there and see how these guys are doing and talk about some steelhead. The forecast showers and thunderstorms today with strong southwesterly winds to 37 miles per hour. It's a numbers game, especially for the situation that we're in. We're coming off of a high water event here. The outdoors is not a hobby. It's not our passion. It is our way of life. We make the perfect cast, slow our breathing to execute a perfect shot, spend hours researching locations and techniques. Regardless of effort, we fail. This series is not about incredible bites or trophy animals. Our goal here at Day One Outdoors is to educate our viewers utilizing new technology to offer a different perspective. Watch as we research new areas, plan out the day, and adjust to changing conditions. If not for other experienced outdoorsmen teaching me along the way, I wouldn't have this life. I owe it to them to pass this knowledge along. I owe it to you. Join us here on Day One Outdoors and let's learn how to become more successful in the field and on the water from day one. and jig this morning, see if we can wake a steal it up here. Probably start about four foot deep. Just kind of cover the inside water first and work our way out to the deeper water. Just three of us will give a couple casts in here and see if anybody's home. Oh, we got a fish on here, boys. Um, just bobber and jig fishing, kind of like we talked about, just slowly letting the bobber get out there a little further in the hole. Just kept getting a little deeper and bobber went under and set the hook. There we go. Right now we're Got a double going on actually, came up into the first spot. Ryan hooked up and then while we're filming him, Jason hooked up back in that tail out too. So it was pretty cool, it happened right away. It's gonna be a good day I hope. Fish, man, first hole too. First hole, a couple casts. I mean, just try a little deeper, a little further out, and Bobber went down, and there she yeah, is. Just gorgeous, man. It's a pretty fish. Well, let's pop that hook out of her mouth and let yep. her go. Oh, she let us. She's all right. She put up a good fight. She's a little tired. There you go. There he is. That's just another beautiful fish, Ryan. Just how big do you think that is? I'd say at least 10, 11 pounds. Yeah, it's Six it's thick. Females, full eggs. She's ready to go. Nice, beautiful native. Nice done, Ryan. All right, man, that was pretty good, huh? Good thank you, thing. thank you, thank you. Great. Let's, stick off. let's take a, a quick moment here and talk about how you caught that fish. So this is a nice, big, long hole. It actually looks more like a springer hole because it's deep and fast up at the top end, and then it drifts back into this shallower tail out. So why did you choose this almost middle section, even a little bit towards the tail out, and uh, how far out did you cast? Talk to me about your gear, your setup, and how deep you went and why. I wanted to start just, like I said, right below the guy right above me. Started off about four foot deep, I think. Got to the middle of the river or so. Kept working my way out, and actually on that cast, I put my bobber stuff about a foot deeper. Sure. Probably was about six foot deep by then. And ended up casting over the far seam on the other side, and all the way down. So it sounds like you put a grid pattern together. It sounds like you came out and you 
looked at the hole and you said, all right, I'm going to start in as close to myself as I can and then work my way towards the opposite bank. You didn't just walk out and go, there's a fish going to be in the middle of this slot, so I'm going to go ahead and put it at six feet and cast out there in your first cast. You started in close and then worked your way out. Is that right? Exactly. Now, what's the rationale behind that? It's not to miss any fish, not to miss any water, and also not to spook anything closer in. You don't want to, you don't want to walk all the way out where the fish can be, and you don't, want to, you don't want to miss fish that are close to you. You'd rather just start shallow, work your way over. I actually thought since I went deeper, it might have been the bottom, so I just kind of reeled up and ended up being a fish. That's the way it goes, man. It works. Well, yeah. what's great, too, is that we've already had, what, four boats go downstream that have already fished this spot. So even though other people have already fished this slot, have fished it with essentially the same gear we're using, you can still find fish in heavily pressured areas. So don't feel like you're missing an opportunity because other people have already fished that spot. So, Brian, nice job again, man. Thank you. The day was off to a quick start with success in the first hole. However, the river was dropping and clearing quicker than expected. But we couldn't argue with the beautiful March weather and incredible scenery. Time to head on downstream and continue building our pattern. Fishfield is your one-stop shop online for the gear you need here in the Pacific Northwest and beyond. From salmon and steelhead, saltwater, trout and kokanee, even crabbing. Visit fishfield.com today to place an order with no sales tax and have the gear you need shipped fast. Fishfield.com, we have what the Northwest Outdoorsman needs. Every once in a while, a new lure comes along that catches every angler's attention. It could be because of all the irresistible colors and finishes, or the patented skip beat action, or maybe it's the wide variety of sizes designed for salmon, trout, walleye, steelhead, and mackinac, and more. But just for the record, we know one thing for certain. We didn't design the maglip to catch fishermen. Yakima Bait Company. When you're breaking down these holes and you understand how they work, whether it's the top end at the step, into the pool, and into the tail out, different techniques will work better in each location, in each hole. At the heads of these holes in the faster current, fishing that inside seam with a bobber and jig, or with drift fishing right in the middle of the hole, because the current on top is faster than the current on the bottom, drift fishing can work very well. When you get into the middle of the hole and into the pool, Fishing bobber and bait and drift fishing again will work really well too. Into the tail outs, the fish can fan out. That's where swinging a spoon and spinner or fishing bobber and jig is a fantastic option. So let's take a moment, look at this river, and then talk about some techniques. The first technique that we're gonna use here is gonna be a bobber and jig. And the reason why is because bobber and jig is a perfect setup to use on this inside seam. If you cast out into the middle or the far bank, all you're gonna do is end up spooking the fish or just passing over fish. So what you wanna use with the bobber and jig setup is a nine to 10 and a half foot long rod. That way it makes it easier to mend your line. Braided line in anywhere from 20 pound to 50 pound, the braided line will float on top of the surface, again, making it easier to mend your line. Here we're using an inline slit float. That way it's quick and easy to change our depth. It is a half ounce weight float down to a quarter ounce inline weight, and then a quarter ounce maxi jig to match up with the exact weight of our bobber. Now, we have about three feet of leader line here. Anywhere from eight pound to 15 pound leader will work out great. Whether it's fluorocarbon or monofilament is totally up to you. With these inline weights, it really won't affect the presentation too much. So what I'm gonna do first is start shallow on this first inside seam where I think the fish are gonna stage, and then I'll work a little bit deeper 
and then I'll make another cast a little bit further out, two or three feet further, and then continue working my grid. So we're gonna first start on this inside seam, the first spot where these fish could be holding, starting it out shallow. We're gonna talk about an underutilized technique. It's using a side planter. Now this was really popular about two, three decades ago, but it's lost favor here in the last few years. But in a situation such as this, where we have really fast water at the top end that's fairly shallow, and it's about 150, 200 yard long hole, using a side planter with a plug covers a lot of water and you can find those active fish quickly. So first what we wanna do is select what plug. I've chosen the Maglip 3.0. And it's a little bit bright out, so I'm going with the silver color to really get their attention. Now, I've chosen this plug because it dives a bit shallower than, say, the 3.5s or larger plugs, because I know that this stretch here is only about three to five feet of water. So what you're first gonna do is put your plug in the water, grab hold of your side planer, and then pull out about 30 to 40 feet of line from out behind your side planer. Once you're about there, you're going to create a half hitch at the top end. So grab your line from your arm wire to your first guide lead, create a quick half hitch, and put it over the stop right here on top. Then just pull it tight. Just like that. Now holding on to your leader, coming out the back end of your side planter. Make sure you get far enough out in the current Put the side planer in the water, and you can see it immediately starts catching the current and taking it out to the middle. Open up your reel into free spool, and let it start swimming out to the spot that you want your lure to be working. Now, I want this thing fishing right off the first or second seam off the shoreline. That's where you're gonna find these more active fish. We'll talk about another technique right here we can do for steelhead fishing is uh, throwing a spinner. Um, we'll start with the rod and reel here. We've got a spinning reel. 15 pound monofilament line. Um, this rod, rods I like to use for spinners, usually eight and a half, nine and a half foot. Uh, this happens to be a nine foot two lamin glass. This is our new Infinity series. We're trying these out today. We've already caught a couple on them. I really like them so far. Um, come down here to the main line. We have a chain swivel, barrel swivel here. And then we put a 10 pound leader on. And then I have a quarter ounce Vibric rooster tail. Uh, this happens to be a nickel blade with a metallic purple body. Uh, this water conditions today, I would like to use any kind of metallic colors like blue, um, you can use all silver. You can also use brass. Brass blades work great. Any darker colors, you can use black bodies, dark green bodies. Um, this clear water, you can even go up to like a full black with a black blade on it. Those all work good. Uh, this size will be great for the water fishing here. It's probably five or six feet deep out in front of me right here. And we're gonna talk about two different ways to fish a spinner. One is to cast it either directly across the river or maybe slightly downstream. Let it sink a little bit and then let it swing through the bottom of the hole. You can do that. Or you can also, in deeper water, you can throw it upstream, about quartering upstream. Let it sink just a little bit, not too much though, because the current's gonna take it down pretty fast. And then reel it just enough to feel that blade spinning. And you wanna be real close contact with the bottom. You're actually probably gonna bump bottom as you come down through there. Let's try it out and see what happens. Salmon swim up to 3,000 miles to return to their exact place of birth to reproduce. Well, most of the time.
pulled up into this hole here right now, and as you can see, it's really long and it and has a very uniform depth. And if you pay close attention to the guys behind me, all of us have grabbed bobber rods, and here's the reason why. In these long stretches that have a uniform depth, you want to be able to cover the water quickly because the fish will spread out. So using a bobber and jig, or a bobber and worm, bobber and bead, even a bobber and egg, and what we hear all the time, that term bobber dogging, that allows you to cover a lot of water quickly. So what we're gonna do is set up here. We're all set up from the top all the way down to the tail out. We're gonna cover this stretch as fast as we can and see if there's anything that will help us build a pattern and determine exactly where in the hole, whether it's towards the top or near the tail out, or in the middle or towards each shoreline where these fish are. Once we dial that in, we can start to finesse our gear and try and put a pattern together and get a bunch of fish up to the shore. Nicely done, guys. Good relief. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so that was on a bobber and pink worm you got it there, huh? Yeah. So yeah. you were fishing just on that first inside seam or were you out there in the main current? I was right out on the edge of that fast water on the about mid river. Okay, so it was down your set about what, about six feet there? Uh probably a little more even. Yeah, six or eight. Yeah, okay. Seven and a half. So and how deep do you think it actually is out there in the middle? Uh, probably in the gut of it, eight feet. Okay, so you were just about six inches a foot off the bottom, yeah. hit that thing right on the nose. Beautiful fish, already oh, yeah. starting to color back up. Beautiful, awesome fish, man. Yeah, thank you. Well, we just started here. I started up there at the top with Ryan, and you guys, you and Greg, came down and fished the middle and the tail out. Obviously, there's fish in this hole, especially if they're staging up right in the middle. Oh, yeah. So let's get out there and get a few more, and I might put on one of those pink worms. Perfect. All right, let's good. get at it, man. All right, well, I just worked my way down the hole here, bobber and jig. Just actually started hitting the bottom towards the bottom of this hole. It's getting a little shallower, so I actually shallowed up my bobber. And first cast after I shallowed it up, went right through. And bobber went down and got a fish on. Like a little dark little native. I mean, just that old school jig that we used to use back in the day, back when we were in high school. I mean, yep. that's. That's I, it right there. I did my one little patented trick too. They come with a longer tail. I actually, I actually trim the tail up just behind the back of the hook. Cause that I, fish is just hooked perfect, man. Yeah. So definitely a colored up buck, but you know, he'll go up and do his job. Another native fish. It's just beautiful colors on his cheek and nice band along the midsection there. It's gorgeous. Pretty well fish. Well done, man. Thanks. All right, get him back out there so he can Got finish it. his business. All right, let's do it again. Yeah, that was just a little bit further down from where Jason just caught his, so I mean, obviously it's a nice long hole. Yeah. Bobber technique is definitely a great one to use in holes such as this, just because you got to cover water. Right. And a bobber jig, you're covering a lot of water quickly, uh, as opposed to drift fishing or obviously plunking, or even sitting up there and just keep on hitting the same spot over and over. You guys, all you're doing is starting up at the top and quickly working your way down, creating that grid, starting in close, shallow, making it deeper, working your way out, deeper again and all the way on down here to the tail end. So exactly. we'll probably catch another one or two fish before we even hit the tail out. Well, so let's do it. All right. So finally I came down here and joined the party. Jason got one, then Ryan did, and what they were doing is they were fishing bigger jigs, quarter ounce jigs, and pink worms. And we've been hammering the same spot for about half an hour. And when you find pressured fish like this, sometimes you need to go a little bit more finesse. So what I did is I put on a bead, and within a handful of casts, we're hooked up. So what we're doing with bead fishing here is actually emulating an egg. And we're late in the year here in March. A lot of these fish have spawned. And these fish get territorial and we'll eat these little eggs. And it's a great little finesse rig. I'm using 10 pound fluorocarbon. Just a couple of split shot on about a five foot leader. He ate it within just a handful of casts there. All right, Ryan, I'm gonna slide it up to you here, buddy. Another nice native. Good little fish. All right, let's beat. 
Got him? Yep, got her. Perfect. Got Beautiful hand. Got a little wound on her. Yeah. Good shape, huh? Well, what you can see, too, is our bead is actually about an inch and a half, two inches above the hook. And you would think that you'd be hooking the fish on the outside of the face and way in behind the gills, but they come up and they bite this. That line slides right in, and she's just right here on the bottom of the lip. Or I'm going to pop that hook out there. Maybe. That's awesome, man. Pretty little fish. I'm glad I got to join in on the action. Good work there, host. <laughs> Somebody's got to catch yeah. fish. You see this, these fish have obviously been in here a little while. They got a few little parasites yeah, on them. She's got scratches on them. She's good and healthy. She jumped out of the water, gave you a good fight. Yeah, I love these March fish. You know, most people are already going out there focusing in on spring chinook, and we had to come in here. We've only seen two or three other boats, and yeah. those fish, what, number four? Number four. It's awesome. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> All right, well, let's set her back on her way, huh? Yeah, let's do it, man. Good job, man. Here she goes. Nicely done, man. Thanks, Chris. Just gorgeous it. fish. Great way to end the day. Absolutely. Thank That's you. That's killer. All right, ready to let him go? Yeah. All right, buddy. Oh, now you don't want to go. Perfect. Greg, I see you caught it on this maxi jig. That's a metallic blue head with a pink worm, but why did you choose the metallic blue head? Well, I have to be honest, no one else today was using them. Yeah. You get the sun's out, nice and bright colors. Those fish can see it from a long ways away. That's a great, great option. Obviously, it worked. I mean, that was a beautiful fish. And I noticed that you came up here away from everyone, too, up here a little bit towards the front end of that tailout, just as it starts to shallow up. Now, why did you choose to come to this part of the tailout and not back there where we were fishing? Well, the last couple of days, the river's been on a drop. Mm -hmm. As you know, I think it's at 9 8 today. Sure. So as the water's getting lower, these fish are going to start pulling up upper in the hole. Sure, sure, exactly. Yeah, they're not going to be back there in those tailouts where it's shallow, where they feel a little bit less protected, especially as the water clears. So the fish pushed up. You came up here away from us. Used something different that the fish haven't seen. You hooked one. Bobby now. Dude, it's beautiful. Great way to end the day, man. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Good job, Greg. Let's do it. Our float chasing steelhead from the bank had come to an end. With the takeout around the corner, Ryan and I discussed the events of the day and what contributed to making us successful. As we pulled ashore, we thanked our captains and took a moment to detail the prevailing pattern. Ryan, we just made it down to the park and we're starting to load up the rafts right now and it was a fantastic day. We, we all caught a fish and we all caught it on the exact same technique. It was on bobbers. Now, what do you attribute that to? Well, the obvious statement would be that's what we use over 75% of the time. Sure. Um, second off, bobbers cover a lot of water. You can cast out and you can let it drift clear down the hole as long as it, you know, it doesn't shallow up and not hitting the bottom. You can let it drift for a long ways. And you can quickly cover water. You can right. change your depths, you can change colors, you can change baits, sizes, and that obviously worked for us today. Well, a couple quick takeaways from today's episode. Be versatile. Make sure you cover as much water as possible and put your pattern together. Number one is location. Figure out where in the hole these fish will sit. 
Number two is your presentation. What style of presentation do they want to see? Do they want to see a spinner coming downhill? Do they want to see drift gear coming through? Today, those bobbers. And number three is your color and your scent. Today, we tried a lot of different sizes and we put a pattern together. They're wanting the worms and the really small profile jigs. And don't forget to have somebody take you down that knows the river. Knows exactly. The Get to know the river that's closest to your home. Know it backwards and forwards during high water events and low water events. When you know that river better than anybody else, you're going to have success regardless of when you have time to get out there and go hit the river. Ryan, thanks again, man. You got it, Tony. Yep. Thanks for taking me. All right, let's Appreciate do it again. It. All right.